Hello and welcome to our lecture entitled, What is Economics All About? It is from Chapter 1, Section 2 of our Economics Alive textbook. Let's go ahead and begin. The first question we should ask ourselves is, what is economics? How could we define economics? And let's ask ourselves that. In about 10 seconds, go ahead and pause the video and ask yourself, what comes to mind when you hear the word economics? What things do you think of? What ideas pop into your head? What do you associate with the term economics? Think about that right now. The good news is, no matter what you wrote down or no matter what you thought of when you were thinking of economics, there's a good chance it's probably true. Because economics is a very big field, a very broad field, with lots of definitions being used by a variety of economists around the world. Economists cannot agree on a single definition, but for this class, to simplify things, this is the definition that we will use for our course. Economics can be defined as the following. Economics is how people use limited resources to satisfy unlimited wants. That definition looks simple enough, but it does pose some problems. For starters, what's an example of a resource? You can see in the background we have some pictures of natural resources, coal, lumber, oil, wind, but these aren't the only resources in economics terms. In economics class, we will define resources as anything that is used to produce an economic good or service. Any good definition, or a good definition does not include more confusing words. We've brought up good and we've brought up service. Well, what are those? An economic good in economics is defined as an object that is created for sale or for use, and a service is defined as work done for pay. So then getting back to resource, a resource is anything that is needed to perform work for pay or create something else for sale or for use. Economics then is how people use these resources to satisfy their wants. We say that resources are limited because they are finite. There is a fixed amount of all resources available, natural resources and all other resources. Even the sun has a, is limited in the amount of energy that it can transfer to our world. All resources are limited. We'll get back to that in a moment. The second part of the definition has to do with satisfying unlimited wants. And in economics terms, wants and needs are often grouped together into one and just referred to as wants. So wants refer to the things that you want and the things that you need to survive. That picture in the background you see there is Scrooge McDuck from a cartoon that was popular when I was a kid, DuckTales. And Scrooge McDuck was the richest person in the world. He had enough money to go swimming in it. Despite this vast fortune, every afternoon at 3.30, Scrooge McDuck would take his cane, his three nephews, and his personal pilot and go adventuring for more gold. All of us are like Scrooge McDuck in a little way. We all might be satisfied with what we have, but we would be welcome to and open to more. This is why we say that people have unlimited wants. If you think about our original definition, how people use limited resources to satisfy unlimited wants, then economics could also have an alternative definition. And that is the study of how we make choices. Making choices makes sense. If you live in a world where there is not as much stuff as people want, 
choices are going to have to be made. Choices by individuals, choices by corporations, choices by households, and choices by governments need to be made so that limited resources can try to satisfy unlimited ones. So another definition for economics would be the study of how we make choices. Within economics, there are two main branches. The first branch of economics is known as microeconomics, and we will spend the first part of our course studying microeconomics. Microeconomics looks at and analyzes decision-making at an individual level. That could be individual people, it could be individual households, or even individual businesses and the choices that those individuals make. That's microeconomics. During the second half of our economics course, we will look at macroeconomics. The graph you see in the background there shows unemployment, inflation, and GDP growth. Three indicators used to measure the health of a nation's economy. And macroeconomics looks at economics on a large scale, not, spe not specific individuals, but a lot of markets combined or a lot of consumers combined to look at overall trends and patterns. We'll spend the second half of, the, of our economics course looking at macroeconomics. And again, within economics, there are two smaller fields. The first one is known as positive economics. Positive economics analyzes and assesses the current economic situation. So they might identify the inflation rate, or they might identify the current uh, gross domestic product. Positive economics assess the current situation. They tell how things are. Normative economics is what the cartoon in the background is about. Normative economics analyze possible choices. What could happen if the tax rate went up? What could happen if the tax rate went down? What could happen if prices were raised? What could happen if prices were lowered? Normative economists analyze these choices and determine the best course of action and make recommendations on what should be done or what ought to be done. So normative economics say what we should do. Positive economics say what is going on now. This concludes our lecture for Chapter 1, Section 2, What is Economics All About? Hopefully you took notes. A good way to summarize your notes would be the following. Write out economics along the left side of your page and find a word for each letter in economics. If you can do this based on what you learned in the lecture or read in 1.2, you've got a good understanding on what economics is all about.